My name is James Hoffman. I'm from London in the UK, and I'm an author of The World Atlas of Coffee. I got into coffee by accident. I got a job working inside a really big department store in Oxford Street in London. And my job was to stand there every day with a little domestic espresso machine and give people free shots of espresso. And I discovered that coffee is completely amazing. And uh, I got a little bit obsessed. I started writing online about coffee in 2004. I'd seen the World Atlas of Wine. I understood that this existed. And so I was always sort of stunned that this didn't exist in coffee. So the book took about two years to write. Coffee producing countries are the kind of most fun to travel in. Like I want to go to Colombia and spend time in Huila in the south of the country and just be there for a week and see as many farms and see what's going on. The first coffee producing country you go to will probably always be your favorite in some ways. The first time that you eat a coffee cherry from a tree, this thing that you've only ever known as like a dark liquid in the mornings that is a piece of fruit, that's kind of life-changing and extremely memorable. And so places like El Salvador, places like Costa Rica uh, are very close to my heart. And I'm always excited to go back. I was the World Barista Champion in 2007. The competition is a bit like being a sommelier. And you're gonna make them each three drinks, an espresso, a cappuccino, and then what's called a signature drink. When I won, it was in Tokyo. It's a really strange feeling having 3,000 people watch you make a cup of coffee. A lot of people ask me how much coffee I drink a day. Probably like four cups, I think, is like a, a good amount. That excludes, though, like tasting. Often, working inside a coffee roasting company, you'll taste 20, 30, 40, up to 100 different coffees a day. I think the weirdest cup of coffee I ever had was in a tiny little coffee shop in Tokyo, in Ginza. I inevitably pick the oldest one on the menu. So I choose the coffee from Colombia that was picked in 1954. It was fruity, but dusty, but kind of moldy, but not. It was weird. It was indescribably weird. If you start to go to a specialty coffee shop and you're looking at all the bags of coffee and they're all different brands and different roasters and different countries and different regions, that's overwhelming. So the book is there to sort of be a guide. My goal is to make coffee approachable, accessible. I don't like it when people make things exclusive and they push people away. So one of my favorite ways to make coffee at home is a pour over. It's super simple. It's really about two things. It's about the fineness of the grind, and then it's about recipe, like how much water to how much coffee you used. I would recommend starting at around 60 grams of coffee per liter of water that you want to use. So for most people, a cup is like 250 mil, eight ounces, so like 15 grams. It brings so much joy to your day. To grind coffee fresh, it just smells epic. And just life is good. When that's how the day starts,